Hello. Welcome to any of my combo lords out there joining me. I am Demotro here in my combo classroom where it is now grade negative two. A few live streams ago I mentioned that we were wrapping up what I called grade negative one of my learning experience here, which could be seen as to a degree uh, an era, to a degree uh, the main channel will have a little season of a TV show of sorts per grade. And this channel, and well, I call it the main channel. My channel called Combo Class, which has actually much less subscribers than here, but is very close to 26,000. If 10 of you from this stream head over there, we'll get to the next amount of thousands. But on that Combo Class channel, where I put out my slightly more finished episodes, we'll have sort of a season worth of a long season, like a little educational TV show per grade. And here on Demotro's Playground sort of channel, we get all of the behind the scenes, extra looks at the lore and chronicles and additional learning that's going on in the grade. And I decided that it was time to switch grade negative one to grade negative two. Right now, it is sort of a seasonal shift in general. Uh, right now, Due to the spring hitting, many cultures put a holiday right around now. You got Easter, you got Passover, and other celebrations that are related to the spring in terms of where they ended up sticking in the year in history. And I, in fact, did both of those types of events over this weekend. I did an Easter-like egg coloring party, and I did actually two, I attended two different Jewish Passover seders, which those are two different cultures, Easter being more of a Catholic or Christian, I'm not sure on all the details, or originated thing, and Passover being a Jewish thing. But what do these have in common is that they landed at the springtime because it's good to mark some sort of holiday as our plants are growing, we're heading toward the summer, and we're at that unique part of the year. So I figured maybe at the beginning of spring is a good time to start our grade, and it's also been just about a year that I've been putting out any sort of footage online. Although this channel was started a bit less than a year ago, I did start filming the content for this channel just under a year ago. So just about like a year minus a day ago, I started filming some of the content that ended up on this channel. Welcome to everyone joining me. And now that we are here in our live stream chatting about our random grade negative two start, I will note there is an official little episode that's sort of like a little trailer to the grade, three or four minutes. Oh, and hey, one of my cats is coming over. Hey, Sage. Sage, come here. Oh, there's Sage coming. All right, I'm gonna turn the camera so we can get some Sage and the shot too. Yeah, it's a good boy. Oh, he's exploring back here. He'll be in the right part of the shot anyway. So here in the combo classroom, we have some upgrades for our new grade. And it's mostly gonna be a similar sort of learning experience that we're just calling a new chapter, but there will be some upgrades. I have more time to spend on combo class. I have a hint more of a budget. I could sometimes have multiple camera people come or camera people come more often throughout the week. I can occasionally spend more time on animated or visual shots that I want to get done a certain way. And I can buy more rare supplies. And some of those include my super cool grandfather clock that I got used for cheap, which is super awesome. And as we pan over here, we can see one other class upgrade. For those who didn't see the intro to this grade, you know, some are going to love this, some are going to hate this. But I was going to decorate the big green wall over there. And although it still has room to write equations and stuff on, I decided to go for a big decoration. So I know it looks like it says ass when you hold it at the wrong angle, but it says combo class. So... It's just a little reminder that we're here in the combo classroom. I had to whip out my spray paint again that I used earlier in the grade to get bring us to a new grade. But I then also realized that exactly the way it's positioned is that 
it does make the last three letters a little prominent if I'm at the wrong angle. So we're going to have to be pretty cautious about what camera angle I have if I'm facing right there. So we don't just get the last three letters in the shot. <laughs> so um, everyone should make sure to check out that little intro episode that includes setting that up and some other fun intro things here, like a bunch more dice that I got and such. But I also ended up getting some more really cool classroom upgrades that I didn't expect. And that's because I have mentioned here before that not too long ago I got a mailbox opened that's a private address that's not my home address so people can mail me stuff and I can go check there every couple weeks, see what people have mailed me, and see if anybody wants to send me any sorts of things like clocks to put in the back of the combo classroom or other things they thought would suit the set here well. And the first thing I received included some hexagonal things and a wasp nest that I showed in an earlier stream. And then it took a little while for me to be able to check again. So when I went back and checked there today before this stream, there was a bunch of stuff there. And I'm not sure if it's all from the same person or not, because it went through like an online retailer where it didn't have any name on it. So I'm, it seems like it might've all been from one person who sent me a bunch of different things, but, and they're new things. It's a really generous donation to the classroom. It's cool stuff, but it could be multiple people. Now, since they didn't put any note on the inside, I'm gonna assume that whoever sent this stuff just wants to make the classroom cooler and doesn't want a shout out. But if you sent this stuff and you do want me to give you some sort of shout out on the stream, it's really cool stuff. I really like it. So feel free to email me at the contact link with like, if you want me to shout you out, you could send me like a screenshot of some of the stuff you sent on like the receipt of sending it over. Cause there's gonna be some sort of digital receipt for that don't need to include your address or whatever if you don't want, but I'll assume otherwise that that person doesn't want a shout out and just wants to make the classroom cooler because, and okay, we got to get this little sage boo. He's been hanging out around here. Hey, sage. Come here. I'll give you pets. I'll give you pets while we stream. Yeah, he's a good boy. He likes helping out back here. He's a very helpful cat in terms of, it's not always literally helping, but he likes to be where the action is, helping out in some way or another, if you're like moving furniture, or teaching stuff. So what we're gonna get to go through in a minute in this stream is a bunch of new classroom upgrades that I didn't even know we were gonna get. Little toys and tools and uh, game-like things and cool little science stuff, basically. And this all fits in the category not of a specific thing i asked for but just of me saying uh if you wanted any cool science stuff that you think i'd enjoy or would help us with our mission of making learning fun and showing people cool things about the world uh this person came or people came through because they sent a bunch of cool stuff so Let's get to a few of the cool things they sent throughout the stream. I'll separate them a bit because there's sort of like three to four different types of thing that got sent. And also, as we share these, a reminder that I didn't expect to get anything new in this mailbox. So that's super cool. The main goal of this mailbox, although this ended up being even cooler, the main goal still stands, which is if anybody has any uh, old clocks or old dice or stuff that I use in my videos that you don't use anymore, you can send used stuff to me too. I'm fine with that. Clocks don't have to work. Dice can be messed up. They'll fit right in. But this fits more of, I imagine these are just items that somebody thought are cool. They just thought like, oh, Dim Dim Dimitro is gonna like this. Demotro's viewers will like this. So, first of all, I already, oh, I should have brought these out. They're indoors because I actually wore them to an event over the weekend. But I have my own sunglasses that I got to start wearing for this grade that were hexagons because when I saw these hexagonal sunglasses, even though they're like big old circles on the outside, part of them's hexagons. I was like, yeah, six sided. That's very combo class esque. Also, six plus six, 12. You get a dozen sides total. Yeah, that's pretty combo class-esque, but they've sent some more types of combo class glasses. 
Now, as far as normal glasses, funny enough, both of my parents have glasses I don't. I got lucky. I got very unlucky in many parts of genetic lotteries, but I didn't need glasses. I got lucky in that one. And so maybe, you know, when people get older, sometimes you'll need some sort of glasses. Maybe I'll need a reading glasses or whatever someday. Who knows? But my eyes seem to be holding up pretty good. And these are not glasses to let me see the world. But rather, they are glasses to let me see parts of the world without being looking directly at that part of the world. Now, I had something that was a different twist on these that I probably still have around my room. I'll find for another stream. It was mirrored spy sunglasses. I got them for a prop for a way older thing. And they're like sunglasses with these really conspicuous extra side bits that have mirrors so that you can sort of like see what's behind you. But this takes a different direction to its mirror. Now, here we've got glasses that their catchphrase is read at a 90% angle. So what these are is a different angle of mirrored glasses they're going to have me looking at something 90 degrees different than where my eyes are actually looking at, will be projected to the eye. And yep, I am looking at the table. So that actually could be useful for filming because like this is exactly the center of my vision right here. You can't even see that probably. But if we were on camera, I could be staring you down in the eyes, you'd think, but really, I'm seeing all of whatever dice or measurements or whatever I got down here. Maybe I'm writing on a whiteboard here or something while still staring at you. It looks like I'm staring at you because this is cool. You want me to look at you? To look at the camera, I look like this. Right now, I can see the chat. All right, so someone comments something in the chat while I'm like this. And I'll say it. There's a little delay. The most recent one I saw was the, the most recent string of Jewish letters, which, although I am uh, significantly Jewish as far as blood, I do not know how to read that. Um, somebody comment something else. And peekaboo. Somebody wrote peekaboo and somebody wrote, LOL, I want some glasses like those. So you see when I'm looking all the way up there, that's the, ang and I was actually looking the direction my head was. I wasn't like looking downward toward the screen or anything. They're 90 degrees. Now for the other test, can the screen see it this way? Can, can we get the illusion on the camera? And yeah, what are you seeing right now? What? Where is it going? Hmm. Something's going on. Something illusion-y. That's where my head was. Now, here's the coolest part. It's not just these glasses. There's two types of mirrored glasses. The other type is either a different brand's interpretation of this or a different angle. Let's see. So we got these mirrored ones as well. And yeah, this is a different brand's version of the same concept. So this is super cool. I can test out which of these two work best. Unless coincidentally two people both sent me this. Um, I'm assuming whoever sent them just didn't know which one works the best and sent both or to have a backup. Maybe so me and the camera person can have them. And that's very neat. What I, oh, okay, what happens if you try and do both at the same time though? So where am I actually seeing? I need to mirror the mirror. Okay, it's hard to see what's going on, but pretty cool. All right, so these sunglasses are the first thing that got sent 
I will throughout this stream show the other things that this awesome person or person sent to the Demotro mailbox. And these are here for now. These ones, since they have actual lenses, I'm gonna put in the desk drawer so they'll be a little safer. And there we go. Uh, actually, no, the, they don't fit in the desk drawer. I'll put them somewhere else safe. The desk drawer is very shallow. I purposefully got a somewhat table-like desk. Uh, well, I don't know how purposefully we can call it. I got one of the first free desks I came across online, but it was a good table-like one. So, now we are going to move on to a little bit of mathy stuff because on the Monday streams, I was going chronologically through different mods of modular arithmetic, which is a good time to bring up because part of why I like those is because they're very symbolic of cycles of things. And I like the fact that although there's an infinite amount of numbers, we can put them into little cycles. And one of the good ways of cycling numbers to find patterns are these mods that are like today being the fifth Monday in a row where we've done something like this. So we're calling it the mod five episode, not episode. Uh, when I say episode, I usually mean the ones on the main combo class channel, but the of the saga portion of the saga, the mod five sector right now. And so we'll discuss that one briefly. And to anyone who doesn't know what that means, it's basically like how much remainder a whole number has after division by five, but it has a lot of cool patterns. It also could be seen as if I had a clock that was a five hour clock that ranged from zero to four, or you could say one to five, but it's way easier to call the five a zero here. So from zero to four, what would happen when I did different things on that clock? For example, are there any square numbers that if you go that many hours on a five hour clock, you never end up at a particular time or prime numbers? Well, actually, yeah, both of those have things. And I mean, the prime numbers aren't gonna work as well here. We'll see in a minute how mod five is gonna have for better or for worse, the traits that come with being a prime mod. And I say for better or for worse, meaning for better and for worse. There are discrete, like, you know, mappable ways in which it's helpful to use a highly divisible mod, which a prime is the opposite of, and ways in which it's useful to use a prime mod, which five is. So, it's funny that when we're using our modular arithmetic, depending on our goal and what we're looking at, sometimes we're gonna get way better patterns out of something really divisible like mod six or mod 12. But there are really uh, useful traits of the mods that are primes and like how primes in general are multiplicative building blocks of all the other positive integers, then I mean, apart from one, the, the building blocks of the ones bigger than one. The prime mods have some times where if we look at a big mod, we're gonna wanna split it into its primes to see what traits are going on in those. And we count in a base 10 system, which is two times five, and mods are very similar to the last digit in the base. So to a degree, our base 10 system is going to be a mix of whatever we have in mod five here and traits that are like binary or evens and odds mod two because two times five gives us our 10. Now it's not purely that we can just take here's the two here's the five you know that's the 10 but there are ways patterns that we can build and see that certain patterns it is basically like multiplying the two table and the five table. Now, what's going on in the five table? Well, we're gonna draw for our modular Mondays, maybe our last addition table for a little while. And that's because the addition tables we're gonna start to see look really similar. So in mod five, if I have something congruent to one of these values and basically 
in these mods, since all whole numbers have one of these classes based on how much larger than the latest multiple of five it is, they're called congruence classes. And each of these congruence classes, like the number is congruent to three in mod five, there's an infinite amount of, but we can right now reduce it to the most useful simple member of the congruence class. Each class is named typically after the member that is between zero and the mod number. So I could be calling this six because we're in mod five. I could be calling that seven, but we're naming them after the lowest one, although they represent many things. So if I do addition, which I'm even going to skip here and that's because when you imagine seeing the addition grow from, well, okay, I'll do a really miniature addition one on the side right here. We'll do a super mini addition one, which will show us that the addition mod tables are very predictable. You have zero plus anything gives you the row itself. Oh, I made too many things here. Okay. Whoops. There. And then you have one, adds one to it, and then cycles back to zero right at the end. Two adds two to it, then cycles back. I'll give an up close on this in a minute, but it's really very predictable. Yeah, I made a little extra room that we didn't need, but basically on the addition table, we can see these stripes. It's like zero is gotten by there. Ones, twos, threes, fours, zeros, ones, twos, threes. And those are gonna get pretty predictable. We know what the next one's gonna look like. It's gonna look like those stripes are a little longer next time. And there's also a stripe that says five. And this one should say four. It's so messy that we don't even need this. We are going to destroy it. Because addition is useful in mods, but we almost don't need the table. It's easy enough to do in our head. The multiplication is a little different because when they cycle back around is different for different multiplied values. So we're not just going to get a clear stripe. We're going to have a little more interestingness in which values appear, where do the values appear, and things like that. So zero wipes everything out when we multiply zero by any other congruence class. By wipe out, I mean turns it to itself. It's an absorbing element, and it transforms the other to itself. One, when you multiply it by something, is sort of the opposite of an absorbing element. It's an identity element that turns everything into what the thing was, not into you, but into it. So one times zero is zero. One, two, three, four. We're going to get some symmetry. We can write that along those directions both. Then two times things, we get zero, two, four. Two times three is six, which is one more than a multiple of five. And then we get our three. And we can once again take that zero, two, four, one, three and go zero, two, four, one, three because of the symmetry. Let's make these lines a little bigger to note that this is like our boundary. This is what we're talking about, the inside cells that are created by multiplying these. And three times three is nine, is four more than a multiple of five. Four times three is 12, two more than a multiple of five. And four times four is 16, is one more than a multiple of five. Now, here's what we can notice interesting about this table compared to other ones we've done before. It has a bit more, depending how you look at it, chaos or predictability, depending how you define it, in that a lot of different numbers appear. And in this non-zero section, they appear in a balanced way. So the same amount of them as each other. There's the same amount of ones, twos, threes, and fours on this. 
And so there's some balance to it, but it's also kind of chaotic that you get so many of every type. Like, I'm multiplying twos, I hit every type. Multiplying threes, I hit every type. And we can note that apart from zero, all the others have something that when they multiply it to give us all the options. Zero, one, two, three, four there. Zero, zero, one, two, three, four there. Zero, one, two, three, four. Basically, if you pick any row or column here, you get a zero, one, two, three, and four in it. And so this is actually gonna help us if we ever need to have certain things that a one-to-one -one that knocks some stuff over. If we ever want to have a one-to-one -one link between what number I got and where it must have come from, that could be useful. Like I could say, it doesn't work for zero. If I say I was multiplying by zero and I got a zero, what was I multiplying by? I don't know. And some mods, a lot of things would have that I don't know answer. Here, other ones, if I say I'm multiplying by two in mod five and I got a four, well, I know I had another congruent to two. There's no other fours in there, there's only one. And so the fact that they each appear exactly once is gonna be useful when we do the opposite of multiplication, division. And that's not gonna be the focus of today's live stream. We're gonna be just looking at fun new stuff in the classroom. And we'll come back to the mod chart in a minute, but I'm almost gonna move on from it in a minute. We're not gonna explain modular division today. We will do that in an episode on the Combo Class channel soon. That'll be one of the episodes in either April or May. We'll go over modular division because there's gonna be a bunch of wild math episodes coming out on there now that we're in grade negative two. And modular division, what we just want to remember is it's going to turn out to be more well-defined in prime mods. And the reason is going to be linked to the fact that in prime mods, non-zero values hit everything. And it's also related to those non-zero values all being what's called co-prime to the mod value. The ones where we hit everyone, which is actually something that's in an episode animated by the Magic Fellow, who I think is here in the chat. So shout out the Magic Fellow. We have some animations that will return someday that show the how like five, if I have a five hour clock, any number that's not a multiple of five set as an alarm will eventually ring on all the numbers. But if I have a 12 hour clock, the only times that ring on all the numbers eventually would be alarm amounts that are co-prime values to 12, which isn't all of them. The only co-prime meant as a reminder shares no factors in common larger than one. So the only co-prime values to 12 that were smaller than it, which would be the member of the congruence class that we're using to talk about them, were 1, 5, 7, and 11. And in 5, though, every number less than 5, apart from 0 of the whole number, non-negative integers, is co-prime to it. Because how is it going to have a factor in common with it larger than one if it's not a multiple of it it's a prime and so we'll note that there's a lot of different ways of explaining this stuff the way of explaining it with dots on a circle and as alarms is something i just came up with myself to try and show oh, cool it's like clocks too but there the common ways we could see this could be phrased as either in prime mods, when you multiply by any non-zero value, you're going to have a one-to-one -one correlation with an input type congruence class and one of each of the possible outputs. And we'll also note that what it's gonna mean in modular division when we go forward is that kind of like in the real numbers, in prime mods, we can't divide by zero, but we can divide by other stuff. I'm not gonna fully explain that yet, but knowing that division is backwards from multiplication 
and that we have a more one-to-one -one correlation here, you might be able to kind of get a gut instinct, hopefully, of uh, where we're going toward. We'll explain more details of how you do modular division in the future, but what we'll see is that it works well in mod five because all of the non-zero values are gonna be easier to almost backtrack multiplication, which division in a way is. And so divide, not being able to divide by zero is not that big of a deal either. We're used to that. We're like, we already know we can't divide by zero, so that'll be okay. In this case, though, zero means multiples of five. We're not gonna be able to divide by multiples of five in mod five. But we're gonna be able to divide by other positive integers because it turns out related to the fact that they're all co-prime to the mod number except zero. So there's a little mod five multiplication. I have had this blocking the chat because I, I either have the thing that shows the chat, but me a little delayed, or I can see what I'm doing instantaneously. So now going back to the chat one, someone says, the glass might not be quite 90 degrees, maybe more like 45 degrees, but in either case works well. And someone called it a super twin prime. It's true that five is the only number that is a twin prime in two ways. It is a twin prime with three and a twin prime with seven. Why can't we have that in the future? Here are some numbers on a number line not right at the beginning, it's up there on the number line. Well, with these numbers, if I wanted to have prime, two more is prime, two more is prime, bigger than three, five, seven, well, we're gonna have a problem because every third number has to be three even, a multiple of three. We dodged the evens, because you could say, well, maybe the evens are just bam, 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 right in between there. But what about the three vins? The three vins or multiples of three have to be somewhere on here. We got five numbers, we got one to two three vins on there. So if this was a three vin, then so is that one we said was supposed to be prime. If it's not and the next one is, then this one we said is supposed to be prime isn't prime. If it's not and the next one is, then three more than that, that one's three even and isn't prime. And if it's none of these, then we found three numbers in a row where none of them are a multiple of three, and that's not gonna work. So because of our good old three evens, uh, you can show that if you ever have prime, or like number, two more is another number, two more is another number, one of those is a multiple of three. So the only chance you get for it to be primes on all three of those is three, five, seven, and it worked out with those. So that is probably, if you had to give each number a special trait about like, what is the most special about this number as I'm going one number at a time and mentioning them. You might say about five, the most notable thing about it is it's the first prime that has room around it and it's all like two and three are right next to each other. So five is the first prime that has room. And it's also the first prime that beyond that has the minimal amount of room and the only prime with the minimal amount of room beyond two and three, which is three primes within a five number stretch. Can't get that again. So Let's hope they solve that twin prime conjecture one of these years. That's one of my favorites. So, let's see. Um, you were saying the audio's low. Let me turn it up. That is probably because a while ago, there, it's probably better now. Um, let me know if it's too loud now, if it's clipping or anything, or if that's good because I can adjust my audio levels now and I adjusted them the other day to film something through the same thing that I stream on and it ended up being hard to find the right level that's not what you call clipping where it's way too loud or way too soft. So let me know if we're clipping now or if we're a little better. But 
Looking at some more comments. People are saying zero absorbs a lot of stuff, and it's true that uh, even outside the mod, in the whole real numbers, zero does have the nickname absorbing element. That wasn't a nickname that I pulled out of the air. Like, you know I like throwing nicknames at stuff, but that's one of the actually accepted nicknames. It's called an absorbing element. And so... People are mentioning some other stuff. So someone said a car alarm and a crashing drone. That's interesting, a crashing drone. I didn't know you can hear that sound. I guess it maybe makes a certain type of beep. I'm used to there being a lot of noises around here. We might get some streams or videos in front of a nice redwood tree that I'll be visiting tomorrow. Uh, vi you know, I'm gonna be at a place with some nice redwood trees. So maybe we will do a stream or video in front of a nice big redwood. To those who don't know redwood trees, it's really nice type of tree. Very large as well. To those who don't know redwoods, you are sometimes shocked by how big it is. There are redwoods that wouldn't fit in the combo classroom. Like the tree itself would be far too large to fit inside this classroom. Not the one we'll visit tomorrow, but still pretty big. So now what we will do is open the next thing that some very cool combo lord sent to any new viewers. Synopsis is uh, at the mailbox. That's not my home address, but my other Demotro mailbox. Somebody sent me all sorts of cool new stuff. And uh, we're going through it throughout the stream, but it's basically all sorts of random cool science-y stuff that they must have just figured I would like and figured would be good on the desk, showing some scientific things on my desk here. And they were cor com completely correct. They definitely know the type of stuff that I like. So let's see what's next. Next, what we have is something that I'm wondering if they might have seen or either learned about this or, you know, gotten a reminder about that this is a thing from a new video on the channel 3 Blue One Brown that came out not that long ago. So I'm sure out of the people in the chat here, we got like at least one fan of that channel as well, if not many. That's probably like the most well-known math channel on YouTube, apart from Number File maybe, is 3 Blue One Brown. I love the guy. Grant, Sand, uh, Grant makes great... Um, animations and narrations and that's a great channel but one of their newer videos involved this thing at the beginning that before he animated the math behind it he showed a little statistical device and this is that sort of statistical device called a galton board it was made by somebody named galton a while ago who noted something interesting about what's called the normal distribution. And the normal distribution is a graph that is very common. It shows up in things like if you have a bunch of random heights where you might go, if you have a bunch of sums of dice rolls where it might go, those would be versions or contain traits of a normal distributions formula. And one of the things that makes a normal distribution can be if I have a bunch of random stuff up here. And well, no, I think that the bunch of random stuff's all up here. And I somewhat randomly, as the little stuff falls, randomly say, go a bit that way or go a bit that way. And then uh, there, go a bit randomly at different stages. Well, if I give them some randomization to where they're going to go, a few are going to go really far because they're going to go like, right, 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 right. A few are going to go really far that way, but most are going to either balance out a similar amount of lefts and rights or just a little bit more of left than right or a little bit more of right than left. And so you imagine maybe if I did that, they would form in a normal distribution. And yep, somebody sent me a Galton board. How cool is that? This is, ah, oh, this is combo Lord of the month, whoever sent me this stuff. It could have been a few people. I'm not sure. There wasn't a name. Once again, if it's you and you do want some sort of shout out, 
email me a picture of the receipt or something, and I'm more than happy to shout you out. But in any case, we got one of these. Let's see it work. It's not going to be exactly when we flip this in this normal distribution, but if we were to do many trials, it would probably average out to it. And it's gonna be relatively close on its own. So this one's skewed a little that way, and I think that's because I'm holding it by hand. Let's put it down on the table. Okay, ready? Now it's flat, I think. Well, I don't know if the table's flat, but <laughs> let's see. This is my table flatness checker. My table is flat. Isn't that cool? Okay, I don't know if you can see it that clear. Let's try and get one more angle. That is cool. All right, so there is our Galton board. According to the box, the Galton board also can, and presumably the normal distribution related to it, can also relate to Pascal's triangle. Or I wonder why they're going about Pascal's triangle on here. Let's see. Yeah, because it's going to relate to these binomial coefficients that make up Pascal's triangle. They got some formulas on here. So we're going to have to spend some sort of bonus video or maybe probably won't need to do a main channel episode because to be honest, 3Blue on Brown did a very good job at explaining with this thing. So, you know, I'm not going to necessarily need to make a video reiterating a lot of that stuff, but I'll have other interesting stuff to say about this and... Here's a few formulas we'll explain a little more in depth in the future, but you'll notice this thing called Pascal's triangle on there. And that pattern, Pascal's triangle, not in relation to the normal distribution separately, will be showing up a lot this grade. Pascal's triangle relates to the polygonal and polyhedral numbers and such that we'll be studying. It contains triangular numbers, it contains tetrahedral numbers and onward. And so it also looks fractally when you interpret it in a mod. So it, you guys are going to have your minds blown when it all comes crashing together here because we're going to be able to combine, we're going to use triangular numbers to explain Pascal's triangle. And then we're going to show the real triangle, triangle, tri triangle of triangles about it. And then when we know Pascal's triangle a little clearer here, we're going to combine Pascal's triangle and modular arithmetic to get a fractal. Can you believe that? That's one of those episodes I'm really excited about that I had planned to maybe put in grade negative one, made grandiose enough brainstorms that I was like, I'm not quite ready to get this right. But now we're in grade negative two, time to move onward to some of those deeper you know, five pages of brainstorm type topics. So, somebody mentioned that he calculated pi out of this in the three blue on brown video, and there is pi in the formula they do right there. There is also E in the formula right there, as well as arguably other, you can call the constant one half a constant, but those are the, you know, some other familiar constants, pi and e. I don't know if you can see that very well. But, you know, three blue, one brown, one of Grant's things is finding pi in something and explaining where the circular motion was because pi usually has something to do with circular motion. So, you know, that's one of his recurring things that we all, all of his viewers like me enjoy. And he had to do that again for sure. We all have our own recurring things. I will say that I, you know, it's not helpful for me on a channel, on a live stream to recommend another channel. There's going to be plenty of people who are watching this after the fact who stop watching this live stream and go over there. So like as a marketing person, I shouldn't be recommending channels, but I can't help whenever they come up to recommend either three blue, one brown 
or Mathologer, because those channels are just such good learning that it's just like good for the world for me to recommend them, even if it's not as good for my channel. So maybe someday I'll work with those guys. Those are legends in my book. So, and someone's mentioning they don't think they've seen a video about Pi in the Mandelbrot set yet. And yeah, there's a, a lot of topics that I'm surprised haven't had a YouTube video on it. One of the slightly more popular-ish channels or something that, like, when I looked up some of my topics of the grade, like, has anyone done something about palindromic numbers? It's like, not that much. It's like, has anyone done anything about what's called prime signatures that I think are a really simple, deep way of looking at numbers. It's like, why aren't there any episodes talking about prime signatures on these other channels? And partially it's that some of those big channels are really into their ability to visualize geometric stuff, which is really cool. And partially because um, I don't do as much computer programming and I do more just like work in notebooks and whiteboards and stuff. My videos are more toward number theory. So some of the number theory concepts aren't as tapped into on YouTube, but there are certain things for my videos that I'm just shocked to look up and be like, why am I the result you get for that? There should be somebody with way more views explaining this concept. It's like a really good concept. And whoever recommended Vsauce, yes, I will have to recommend Vsauce too. Although Vsauce, and I mean the first one, like the, all three of them are cool, but I mean the first one is not always math focused. Not only are the math ones good, but all the videos are good. So even though it's not always math and a lot of them aren't very mathy, that's one of the greatest channels of all time. And yeah, number file is cool too. And a bunch of others. The la Since I shouted them all out, I got to give one more shout out to Matt Parker from Stand Up Maths. That guy's great too. So now shortly, we will move onward to the next thing we received in the mail. However, somebody asked for mod seven. Now mod seven will be a good example of a primey mod and it will be in two weeks because in an episode about mods, I will cover, you know, whichever ones are really good examples. But in these live streams, the Monday ones, I'm going one mod at a time. So I honestly didn't have too much to say about mod five without spoiling my modular division episode that's going to come out in not too long. But I'll just note that this is our mod five multiplication table. Let's remember that non-zero values hit everything exactly once if you go in a row or column. And mod seven will come in two weeks. And as for the one where we'll be live streaming after I've already explained modular division in an episode, which remember will be on the main combo class channel. Usually when I fully explain something for the first time, we'll be on that other combo class channel where like my best episodes go. Now on that channel, when we explain modular division and then do a live stream as another example, that'll be, Maybe mod seven will have done modular division by then, but more likely by the time we do our modular Monday mod 11 edition, we will have already done an episode about modular division. And then we can do a refresher about how it works with the mod 11 chart. I wonder how long it'll be till I stop making the multiplication tables. I think I'll, I, I'm pretty sure I'll be making them up through 12. But if I keep up this series, I don't think I'm going to be drawing one of these for like mod 60. Well, actually, 60 would probably be like the one out of that range I would. I don't think I'm going to be drawing one of these for mod 61. But yeah, we'll program them at that point or something. So someone's asking, how's it morning for me? And it's not morning. It seems like morning is like a, one of the words in this title practically, but... So this is a very maybe morningish vibe, but uh, it's not morning, and it is actually almost dark. It's 6:50 p.m. or about to be, and so actually the stream is likely going to get cut off by the darkness. I'm not positive it'll last because it gets dark a little later now, but 
there's a chance that the stream will end because of the darkness. So we are on the later end. And someone says they think I got stuck with some particular concept too much. No, modular arithmetic is very useful at the heart of number theory. As far as saying, we're talking about this mod, then the next, then the next, then the next. It's partially just a backdrop for the live streams. I wouldn't do a video series that wasn't the live streams where I went through every single mod. But it's going to be sort of a backdrop for our Monday streams for a while. Because why not have some little recurring thing to watch grow? But the good news is that modular arithmetic has so many more cool properties that we will look at in the future. So this is just the tip of the iceberg when we're saying like, here's another multiplication table, here's another multiplication table. Modular arithmetic doesn't just mean what this table can do. So, but I don't care if people want to try and criticize me. I have very thick skin. So I'm pretty confident on my ideas I like to do. And it's hard to dissuade me from doing things in my show the way I want to do them. So it'd be pretty hard to convince me to change the way I make my episodes or streams and stuff. But I always will, you know, listen to people. Somebody says they will spend their life on the Colatz conjecture regardless of any progress. A lot of people have that be a fun one that they sink a lot of time into because it's an age-old question. Other people have their own age-old question they sink their teeth into. What we like around here is clocks. So if you say that it's one concept I got stuck on a little too much, well, I will note that it's partially to line up with the fact that we do have, you know, that many clocks. We're probably not going to do more modular tables than modular clocks will physically exist here. But that's just because I hope to get more than one clock per week this grade. No, well, maybe not. Maybe we will pass the mod table per amount of clocks at some point. And somebody says they don't like the darkness to take the stream so quick. And the darkness can always be overcome. I have a lantern from, you know, I left it out from my camping adventures the other week. So I can always go grab a lantern if I need. Now, here, I think it's about time to look at another thing that someone sent me. Funny that we're talking about clocks, because when I started to open the mailbox, what I expected to get was a lot of old beat up clocks. Didn't as much expect to get a bunch of random cool science gear like this or the wasp nest I got or hexagonal trusses or stuff. But all of that was super cool. But maybe someday we will also have some of you folks send some of your own new clocks. I mean, not new, your own used clocks that you want in the background here. Make sure they don't have, like, uh, I don't know, bed bugs or whatever. I, don't I actually looked it up. There was a shop near me that had bed bugs. And I looked up, can bed bugs be in clocks? And it's like, yeah, they're, they can't be, they don't drill into the wood, but they can go into the crevices between bits of wood that are, like, glued together or screwed together. So I was like, okay, not getting my clocks there anymore. Those bed bugs are hard to eradicate. Now, let's hello to everybody saying hi's and waves and such. And we're going to look at one more thing that one of these awesome combo lords sent me to that mailbox, which is the second last of the new things. And it is two. I'm not sure if they're going to be the same or different. Something cubic, but with snake in the name. Now, I'm imagining this is probably a puzzle that once I unwind or separate this somehow, the goal into this shape. Also, if you do send a clock, extra shout out if it has a zero on top and not a 12. That would be extra cool. But I can edit it if not. So look, it's a snake. It's a cube that you can turn into a long snake. 
Oh no. Sorry for the connection issues. I need to... Hmm. Let's see. Hopefully our connection issues smooth out soon. Maybe I can also lower something about it to make it work better. Let me try and see if I can go a little... Less or something. Or I don't know. We're going to try hoping it comes back in one moment. Because usually it is a temporary glitchiness. Now somebody's asking if I've ever done math to tell time on clocks. And... Okay. And I'm not sure what you mean math to tell time on clocks. We've done modular arithmetic on clocks for examples of like... If you go an amount of, some amount of hours, that same amount of times. And, okay, hopefully you can hear me on these parts. I don't have an Ethernet cord out here in the classroom. I need to get a long Ethernet cord to make that work. So that's an upgrade that I need to do for my streams. But right now it's on the Wi-Fi, unfortunately. So hopefully we will be back for the rest of our stream to a good enough degree. And... We can see our cool snakes. Oh, these are cool. So now maybe I'm going to have to try and figure out how to get it back into a cube. Here's another one. So this is what I'll leave one as snake and one as cube for now. So I am going to, yes, as people said, I need to buy a long ethernet cord that will help things out around here. And, believe it or not, even with those mirrored glasses, snakes, and gall- oh, Okay, that wasn't the new stuff, don't worry, that was all the old stuff. So, oh man, there's a lot of stuff that we're dropping around here, but that's because it got really windy, and all these clocks were on the walls, or mostly on the trees, and the wind knocks them all off. All right. Now, believe it or not, I was saying, that wasn't all of what was sent. The wildly cool combo lord who sent me some other stuff also sent me one more thing. And I will show it here just in case our stream gets extra glitchy and we need to not have it be super long. I'll show our last cool thing that got sent, which... We're not going to build right now because it's a buildable thing. It's actually a stream activity. This next one is definitely going to get a stream of its own because it's a little activity. It is one of these suspension things from some Lego light. You know those brands that look like Lego but aren't Lego? Well, I don't need to mix this with my Legos, luckily, because it's just its own little device. It's one of these suspension things that this bit... Looks like it wouldn't hold up just from gravity, but it gets suspended just by these light, not tense cords. So, hard to explain, but it's a really cool little scientific structure that will support itself in a way that seems to defy gravity. And thank you to everybody joining me. So these are going to be cool things that I'm going to set up on the desk. You can't see the whole desk right now because the computer's on it, but usually when we're filming whole videos and a camera person's further, we'll be able to see the whole desk. And we will now have snakes and a Galton board. And once we go and do this stream where we build this, we'll have one of these too. And that was the word I was looking for. I knew someone would comment it, so I didn't have to look it up. Tensegrity, if I'm pronouncing that right, is a term for what type of tension this is, for the type of structure that holds itself up in this way. So it is a tensegrity type thing of Lego. So cool. In fact, I got to show that to my brother. My brother's going to think that's really cool. So 
In fact, I bet I could get my brother to jump on the stream and chill with us on the stream and build that sometime because he's my younger brother loves Legos. So, so do I. They're really cool. <laughs> They're useful. Now, someone said snakes in the combo classroom. Funny enough. So you see how this is a snake of its own sort. To those who saw the grade negative one finale episode, you probably saw that there was these things called slender salamanders that I found in the classroom. Salamanders in the combo classroom. From it like flooded after all of those rains. And then when we cleared everything out in the muddy, marshy like area, there were these long, thin things that first when I was cleaning it out with my main camera guy, Carlo, and he was like, he grabbed something and he was like, yo, look at this. I think these are little snakes. And he held them over. And then he was like, no, wait, they have legs. And so I was like, whoa, what's going on? Little snakes, but with legs. And that was exactly what it looked like. It looked like little snakes, but with legs. And if you look up slender salamander, I'm pretty sure it was one of those species because it looked a lot like that. And they did get released into a nicer, larger wildlife area. But they weren't snakes. They had legs. They were uh, salamanders that looked very snake or worm-like. Someone's wondering if we made bridges based on this principle. I feel like that's a little risky. That would be so funny. Like if you were driving up to a bridge and you see it supported like this and you just have to trust it. You're like, okay, I know that uh, I built a little Lego table where the top part somehow defied gravity. Let's hope this bridge. Whoa, what was that? What was that? Whoa, wait. Could you see that in the background of the stream? Something just fell back there, like out of the blue. I'm gonna go back in the stream a second. I wanna see what that was. That was weird. What fell? Cause what has me curious is that, oh, it was one of these clocks. One of these clocks fell down. Um, but it had me curious because the other day I had a clock perched up there and in the grade negative two intro, here's a first for the combo classroom. A squ and I love this when you have two different symbols and they combine that it's an intentional thing I do in the class. Well, one symbol around here that recurs is our squirrels. They represent a certain type of wild little nature that you get certain type of little surprise from nature. And Another recurring thing here is our clocks, obviously. And in the grade negative two intro trailer, like little three or four minute intro episode, I put on the main combo class channel, which is linked in the description, a squirrel knocked over a clock. That's the first. I can't believe we got it on film. I was just here blowing the bubble machine at me. Oh yeah, I'll show the bubble machine again. We do have a new bubble machine. I got an upgraded one. And so... I was blowing the bubble machine and it kept getting in my eyes. So I was like, oh my God, this stings. So I was like facing the other way, kind of. And then since I was facing over here, I saw a squirrel come. And then I was like, oh my God, a squirrel's coming. Me and Carlo, the main camera guy, have an agreement that if a squirrel comes, start filming as soon as possible or keep filming. I try and deliver some sort of line that might fit into the episode. I told him that. It's like, if a squirrel comes just start filming or whatever. I'll try and say something that I think will work well in the episode so we can have the squirrel in the shot. And cause you never know when they're going to come. And so this time I was just like the squirrel ran by and I was like, okay, turn, say the line. And as I was saying it, I heard something else fall and I was like, what's going on? So much stuff's going on. And then afterward we looked at the footage and the squirrel was right here. And it was like resting on this wooden thing partially, which it's not doing. Like if I let go, it's falling now, but this was like there. Somehow this was like stable. It was like there or something. And let me make sure you can even see this. Um, yeah, so this was like there 
And then this squirrel runs by on the top, like the tip top, bumps this the tiniest bit, and like enough that it just bumped, it was barely moved, but this thing fell. And it was pretty cool. I've never seen a squirrel knock over a clock before. So the squirrels are gonna be visiting more often because we have this bird feeder that, yep, it's empty. The first time I filled it, the squirrels knocked off the bottom of it and all of the seed is was on the ground now. I assume they've been eating it. Then I refilled it and then it got re-emptied in a day without them knocking off the bottom, which is kind of mysterious because it just means the squirrels and or birds either just ate a ton or they like clawed it out without knocking off the bottom that time. But in any case, the squirrels like the bird food, so they're gonna be coming for that. Someone's giving them walnuts in the neighborhood. I see the squirrels coming around with walnuts, the little lucky dudes, pretty cool. So maybe I'll, I'll give them some type of nice pecan or something. I did leave them a nut once or twice back there for their cameos. So we're trying to get even more birds and squirrels. There's not that many birds in the background right now, but there's been an insane amount of birds in the classroom this grade. And I don't know if I'm just appreciating them more or if there are more of them, but it seems like there's more birds than when I started the grade. Not like this second, but like on an average day-to-day, -day, season to season basis. It's about a year from when I was started filming the beginning of combo class. And so I feel like there was more birds this time with the same season. But um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm just appreciating them more. So wait, what's going on? You traveled forward a couple seconds in time. What happened there? Was it that I glitched for a bit and then you, I unglitched when I was moving around the classroom or something? That's funny. Yeah, well, we'll go with it being a weird magical power I have. Sometimes in shots, if you look at those episodes, I'll be standing next to a whiteboard and a little gust of wind will hit it in just the right way or a clock that it'll fall. Not all the stuff that I knocked over, I like knew was gonna fall or had even knew was crooked. Some of it's just like in the shot. And some people have looked at the episodes and been like, whoa, that guy has some weird magic power. It's, uh, I'm assuming the wind, the dirt, the ghosts, the, no, I'm kidding, maybe. So someone asked if I play chess and you got me worried for a second when you said that uh, at first, cause I was like, wait, did I like switch the type of live streaming I'm doing? Are they looking at my computer screen now or something? What are they looking at? Is it like, did I switch it to like Demotro's private notebook word document is what's on the screen? Oh no. But, no. <laughs> so someone asked if I play chess and occasionally I like chess. It's fun. And I was in a chess club when I was in fifth grade at the school. So like, I've always liked chess to a degree. I don't play it that much. I never got into the online chess. So I have some friends who, since they play online chess, they play like once or twice every week and they can beat me because I play like once or twice every year. I don't play very much. So, you know, I don't, I, I, I am a low-ish level player. I would, I would beat someone who has only played once or twice. Like I know a little bit of strategy from back when I used to play but I only play a couple times a year, so not a pro by any means. There will be an episode or episodes at some point where we'll look at different things like the math of chess endgames, the math of chess being technically a game that could be solvable to prove either a first person win, a second person win, or a forced draw by either player but also that being possibly too big of a solution for the universe to contain. So that's a sort of interesting topic. And when I make an episode about solve games like that, I got to get in, I haven't looked for it yet. So I still need to look online, but 
Someone let me know on the Discord or something if you uh, want to look this up. Apparently, Connect 4 is solved, and you can, like, prove the first person or second person win. I imagine it's a really massive amount of if this, then that, then if this, then that, then if this, then that. Probably an insane amount of data, not like a little thing you memorize, because you need to know from different states what your next move is. But apparently, it's solved. And if anyone gets in touch with, um, I haven't looked up yet where you find the solution to connect for so I can beat all the kids at the park. No, so I can make an episode about how chess is also solvable but may not fit in the universe in the same way. Let me know. There's other uh, simple games like tic-tac-toe. I kind of want to. I think this will be good for my brain. I might try and prove myself the tic-tac-toe status of being able to force draws. So it's cause, you know a fun thing to think through. How would you prove that you can force a draw? So let's see, non-Euclidean chess. That sounds fun. We used to do this one in chess club and stuff called, I think it was called Bug House. Yeah, you had two chess boards, you had four players, you and a friend were different colors of chess pieces on the same team though. So you're playing a game as the white pieces, they're playing a game as the black pieces, but you're on this like meta team. And then whenever you take a piece of your enemy, which is the color of your teammate, you give it to them and there's some way that they're able to regenerate it into the play as one of their pieces now. So it's like this cycle back and forth between the boards. I don't remember the exact rules, but that was cool. Someone's wondering what game is the most mathematical in nature. I mean, you can't really say the most mathematical because any of these could be described by math. You could say maybe there are categories of game that are not as mathematical, but within the category that we've described, all of those could be described in purely mathematical terms. And so in the purely mathematical terms, you can't really say which is the most mathematical, like they're all equations. If you said which is the most strategic or which is the hardest to solve, or there's various questions like that. The most strategic of the ones I mentioned is definitely chess, but I don't know. I'm interested in designing my own board games. I think that there's board games out there that have less, not like in the world being played, but like in the possibility of all the possible board game realm. There's a possible board game with less pieces than chess, but still enough strategic complexity that it's too hard for a computer to ever solve. And so I think they could make a better chess. Uh, I'll make some different board games in time, but I'll also play chess a few times a year because it's fun. But it's not, it's a little arbitrary the way the pieces work, you know. It, why, like, why does on passant exist, really? So it, it's a little arbitrary, some of the stuff. So it, there could be a simpler chess. I think it's an interesting idea that I would like to go into someday is trying to, you know, from scratch, build simplest rule set, hardest to solve strategy. What is, what's the ratio you can get? Because chess has a really strategic level, but it's not the simplest rules. It, you know, it has a decent amount of different types of piece. I think you could make a good game with only maybe like four or five different types of piece instead of it having so many different types. All right. Someone asked, why would you put a cat on top? I'm not sure what you're referring to, a cat on top of where? And someone said, they mentioned something about Minecraft modeling tiling problems. Minecraft is very QB, you know? I, I don't think I've played Minecraft myself, but I certainly know enough about it from being a big fan of YouTube and it being tangentially connected to YouTube culture. But 
it's very cubey as far as I know. So, you know, sort of like this, but even in more of a grid like pattern. And so those tessellate space, in fact, we'll do a bonus video sometime soon, or maybe even a full episode about this new shape they found. Somebody pointed it out in a stream here once. It happened like right before one of my streams, I guess. And someone's like, they just discovered the new shape while we were streaming. And sometime around then, it was like a few weeks ago, science, uh, mathematicians discovered a new type of shape, which is called an aperiodic monotile. And they've been looking for one for many years. And it's a really simple looking shape. It's like one of those like hiding in front of your eyes type things. It's surprisingly simple. And so I think that that will need an episode here or at least a bonus video because it's pretty cool. It relates, uh, we can mix it in with the topic of what's called Penrose tilings, which are very similar, but involve two types of tile. In a way, the precursor to this aperiodic monotile that was discovered just within the last month, like not within April, I don't think, but within the last, I think it was in March, maybe sometime really recently. They might have discovered it a little before that and popularized it then. I don't know. I'll look at the history. I'll check it. I know that a week or two ago, I saw it in a normal newspaper, got an article about it. And I saw it in like math online stuff. But I'm not sure if there's any, I haven't looked up if people have made videos about it yet. I uh, probably will make one myself. So cubes are cool, but they're not the only thing that can tessellate space. It's all okay, don't worry. Nothing destroyed. So, <laughs> somebody is recommending the subreddit Anarchy Chess. I have been there. It's kind of funny. It is pretty funny. So people should go to the combo class subreddit sometime, remember, and post some interesting thoughts because I try also the discord, which will come up in a moment. I love that, but I don't use discord as much in my day to day life. Discord's also not as good at getting the combo class name out to other people as something like Reddit or YouTube comments. So we should get more posts on there too. But speaking of the Discord, I might move over to discussing that for a moment because we have a puzzle series there, which there's a new puzzle that was sent to me by the Magic Fellow, who is my main mod on there. And same one I mentioned who animated something in one of those episodes too earlier in the stream. And there is a weekly puzzle of sorts that we were doing on Thursdays in March. And now I'm going to be doing on Mondays because this will be my guaranteed weekly time for this month that I'll be streaming. In addition to other random streams, definitely one for an hour or two at this time, 6 p.m. Pacific time Mondays. So and other random ones. Since this is the fixed one, I decided this will be the one where on Mondays we will, in April, be doing that as our puzzle day, where we present a new possible puzzle that you folks can think about. And to those who do want to participate in the answering part, you can go to the Discord, uh, the combo class one, which is should be linked in the description here. Let me double check that. Uh, yeah. And... There is a section there for discussing that and giving answers. And I'll also give a shout out typically to whoever's the first to answer it. And maybe sometimes to if anyone adds any particular cool extensions or other answers or anything. And in this case, to make sure I get the shout out in, let me pull up that discord and it is a fun place to chat with combo lords there. I love the community we have building there. It is, I don't have, I didn't have as much time to go on there, but now my schedule is opening up more with me transforming to combo land in grade negative two. So I'm gonna return to poking through some of the sub forums on there, probably over this week. A lot of fun conversations. 
And for the shout out of who got the last puzzle related to the words ship and dock, which I'm also going to note the puzzle was last time by someone named Ian Stewart was the original inventor of that puzzle. These puzzles are often ones that are, um, you know, brought to our audience on the discord posted by magic fellow, but they often do have an author. I didn't mention it right away because I was thinking maybe that'll encourage people to try and look it up and try and get a spoiler from that. But I'll note that to anyone who wants to go back to last week's puzzle, it was called the Ship Dock Theorem by Ian Stewart. Now, the first person who got that was Pokemon Hacks 43 who has gotten some of these, spelled P-K-M-N-H-X-4-3. And the puzzle that's going to be coming this week, um, I guess I'll do the puzzle right now, and then the stream's not going to last too much longer, because either the darkness is going to cut us off, or if I start glitching again, since I don't have too much left to say, if we either get too glitchy or dark, I might be like, all right, bye folks, see you tomorrow. So we're going to present the puzzle now as well, which is a geometric one, and it is given a cross-like shape, where if you imagined this sort of cross, do, 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 some call a Swiss cross due to being on that flag. I, the one in the puzzle is just an image that, although the Swiss cross itself is a, a little elongated, so if you do the exact Swiss one, these would be a little longer. The picture in the image looks somewhat like we have a type of cross made up with equal squares. Now, the question is, you get to cut this with two straight cuts, basically drawing two straight lines through it. You're not going to cut and rearrange and then cut. You're just going to draw two lines through it. You have to cut it into four pieces that are not only congruent, which with polygon-like things like this, congruent means same shape and size, but could be rotated or flipped version. So it can be flipped or rotated or slid over version of, but has to be same shape and size. They have to be four congruent shapes, but they also have to be able to be rearranged into a square. So the puzzle is to cut this with two straight lines so that not only are the pieces congruent, but we can reassemble the four pieces into a square out of this type of cross. So that'll be this week's puzzle to anyone who wants to test your brain. It's good to challenge your brain with stuff like that. I love puzzle books and I do a lot of puzzle like investigations on my own. Things like what would happen if I make an integer sequence that does this or what would happen if I test out this property of numbers and try and puzzle through things. It's a good way to not only come toward either facts that you have a better gut feeling for than just being told them or new discoveries or just you know training the brain so somebody is mentioning that you can generate rep units which i sometimes call hyper 11s in base 10 by writing them of the form three plus four times two, where the two can have any amount of sevens behind it. Like two seven, two seven seven, two seven seven seven. Yeah, I would have to check exactly what you mean by that, but there are some cool ways we can make those hyper 11 -y fellows by multiplying certain strings of things into a larger string. It's also fun to see the components that make up each one. I love these hyper 11s so much that I happen to know that one one well, 1, 1, 11 is obviously prime, the 1, 1 in our base. But 1, 1, 1, not everyone knows. I do remember it's 3 times 37 because it's the structure of this hyper 11. There's another one that's, it's either the 4 or 5 ones one that involves times 271. And there's like certain rep unit factors that are imprinted in my brain. 
there will be an episode about the Hyper 11s coming back because I did an episode and lots of chats about these Hyper 11 -y numbers composed of all ones in different bases. But there's still one open conjecture about them that I didn't go into. That's a subfamily of them, like a subfamily of certain ones of them, like a certain amount of ones in it. And not the ones that are Hyper 11s in Base 10, but the ones that are Hyper 11s in Binary. So it's sort of going back to the Mersenne Primes, which are the largest prime numbers ever discovered, and are Hyper 11s in Binary. Well, we are going to come back to a still open question and unique subfamily of those. So, somebody is wondering if I saw three blue on brown's latest video. Uh, you must have missed a little earlier on the stream because I noted not only did I see that uh, about the normal distribution and pi being like that thing called the Galton board, but an awesome combo lord mailed me one of those. This came in the mailbox, if you didn't see that part of the stream. And yes, it was extra cool because I had just seen a video from one of the greatest math channels explaining it. So, and I wasn't talking about myself to anyone. So, someone said, am I on the West Coast? I am. I'm in California. In fact, I'm in the Bay Area of California, and anyone who's in the Bay Area of California who thinks they might want to help out on set or something can feel free to email me. Somebody's wondering what would happen if you didn't have the A or the BI of a complex number. Well, then you'd just have a real or imaginary one, which is still, still technically in the complex numbers. Complex is a bigger realm that includes it all. So let's think of an example. Like if I say English is a language. So if I say like, what are the languages people speak? English is one of those and it's in there. This is a very rough analogy, but sort of like that. The complex numbers have you know, this language and this language, and they are their own language that's a bigger meta thing. And so, okay, I'm going to abandon the analogy and just go to the what would happen. You know, if you add the number 3 plus 2i and you deleted part of that, you're either left with 3 or 2i. Both of those are called complex numbers, but we don't need to use the term complex to describe them because complex is usually saved for when it's like the only when it's not real or imaginary so we're left with but it is complex but in those cases it's you know the particular type of complex numbers that are on the real number line or the, on the imaginary number line will usually be called just real or imaginary because it clarifies more details about them so someone's wondering if i'll ever make a video about chat gpt um if you mean on the main combo class channel, because you said will combo class, then that'll probably come up in an episode about AI. I'll probably at some point do an episode about AI and there'll be a few minute section of it. That is the hilariously bad math answers I've gotten from chat GPT. We have done live streams about that on here. And so I might, before I ever do that, do like a bonus video on this channel that is compilation of some of the dumbest answers I've gotten from it. I made a short of that, I guess, but I might do like a compilation of some of the dumbest answers I've got. But when I do an episode about AI on the main combo class channel, it's going to need like a two minute section where I talk about some of the answers chat GPT has given me because they are genuinely hilarious. And I just mean, it's like the type of thing where I'm not expecting it to be good at math, and it just surpasses my expectations with how like creatively bad it is. It's like so so bad it would take work to be that bad. <laughs> so someone's uh, clarifying about the A or B I. What would happen if you didn't have either of them and tried to find them? If oh, if you mean if you had neither the A nor the B I. Well, one could argue zero is that that the number zero is on the real number line and on the imaginary number line, but it has none of each. So the number zero in a way 
is a complex number missing the A or the BI. But you might mean something else uh, in any case. Uh, interesting to think about that stuff regardless. And we got some bird and squirrel appreciators. That's always important. You know what I think I need to do? I realize there's something I wanted to show you folks that I made that will spoil possibly before the next stream. So I should show it to you now. It's when I was at an Easter-ish. It wasn't for Easter, but Easter is sort of the holiday that started this trend. But I was at an egg coloring party yesterday and I made a clock egg. I might as well show you. When I grab the clock egg, what we'll do is we'll get more bird feed. We'll fill the bird feeder, even though there's, I was going to say a 50-50 chance the squirrels knock it off. And that is actually exactly what the data corroborates or whatever, because there were two times that I did it. And one time they knocked it off and one time they didn't. So our data does point toward 50-50 odds that the bird seed gets eaten from here or gets knocked on the ground by a squirrel first. And someone's saying there, someone was wondering about how reliable chat GPT is and most of the answers are warning against it. Just to get back to the comments, I would highly recommend not using it to copy something important. I would use it for something creative. That's cool. Like if you want to use it to help you brainstorm something that could help you maybe. But if you try to use it to like write a paper for school or write someone an email or something like that, you have a really, you're playing a risk with every sentence being something absurdly off the wall, makes no sense, could, you know, I don't know. It doesn't really seem like offensive, but to me it's almost offensive how confident it is about wrong math stuff. But it also, funny enough, just contradicts itself. It was at least the one that I used before. Now, here's the thing, though, actually. They have paired up with Wolfram, which is actually a good online calculator. There is a chance. I don't know if that's just the paid version or all the versions. There is a chance that at this point, ChatGPT is going to get good at math or maybe like as of a week ago is good at math because Wolfram, who paired up with them, is an actually good computer at doing math stuff. So th that might save that part of them. And then my terrible answers for them will almost be even more historic. If ChatGPT becomes this trusted thing, I have all these saved answers of it telling me like, five is the only multi-digit composite number. And then the funny thing is like the next sentence, they'll contradict itself where it's a bad language model in that, or it was at least, It'll say something's true and then say the same words, but with not in it and is true. It's like, you should just know as a language model that you don't say a string of words and then the string of words, but with a not in them also. So it's really weird. It's kind of comical how bad it is. It all, every time I ask it something, I'm like, it's probably going to, when I asked it a question, it's probably going to get a little part of this wrong. And it'll just like blow me away by how creatively off it is. And someone says it is also academic dishonesty. That's true. There's a reason it's banned. It doesn't help you learn to copy that way. Don't cheat in that way. It doesn't help you learn. So, of course, it would be, you know, you'd get in trouble, too. You really don't want plagiarism on your record. And also, you want to learn. So, you know, don't use it to cheat for other reasons as well. Not just because you'll be wrong. But I just think it would be funny if, if you, someone used that thing to cheat on like a math related essay, I, I just want to be a fly on the wall for the after class talk they had to have with their professor where the professor's like, I'm just like curious why you wrote five is the only three digit triangular number because it is the only number that is the square of I or like just some of the stuff that it does. And you read in class like, oh, um, I meant... <laughs> if anyone does want to see that funny stuff it's in the titles of some of my really old streams so after this stream which isn't going to be too long you can always go to one of the older streams that has chat gpt in the name because i've done it a few random times but mostly in the ones that have that in the name 
I pretty much, I think every single stream I've done on here is still archived. I can't think of any that aren't. Like, I want to factually say that they all are, but, or maybe what makes me think they're not is one process as a video or something. Because, yeah, I think one's under the videos. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm like 99% sure that everything I've ever streamed on YouTube is still available content. So, let's see. And about it passing tests with ChatGPT and stuff, remember that I also made an episode about how tests are not a measure of a human's true intelligence or competence in a skill always. And so, why would there be a good test of a robot if they're not always a good test of a human? I think that we should uh, set the robots out on some math proofs, and when they prove some more stuff, we'll trust them more. I gave the robots a point of credit for helping prove the four-color map theorem. We haven't gone into that quite yet, but computers have assisted in a proof that is controversial because it's too long of a proof for humans to check the computer part. They narrowed it down to an insane amount of things that had to be checked and proved that if the computer checked all those, then something would hold. So there was a proof element the mathematicians had to do, but there were too many to check by hand. And so there's already one result that some people say is proven and some say still needs a more thorough proof because a computer helped with it. And... In that case, I'm leaning toward believing those computers. I don't see any reason why the four-color map theorem wouldn't be true in that case, or that they got anything wrong. But it is a great question of how much do you have to double-check these computers before you let them be part of the proof? Oh, but the funniest one with ChatGPT is when I asked it the other week about, I was like, did you get better at math? And they're like, yes, I'm better at math. And it says that on their website too. Then I asked them some stuff about math. They were wrong. And I was like, mm, that's not true. And they're like, oh, I'm sorry. I got that all wrong. I'm not designed to do math. And then I said, huh, earlier you told me, well, I was thinking, you know, earlier it told me I am good at math. And then so I asked it, this is on one of the older streams. Are you, are you, did you, or what was it? I asked it something like, did you not get better at math, but you actually just got better at telling people that you're good at math? And it said, yes. So it confirmed that. It said, yes, I did not get better at math. I got better at telling people I got better at math, which it did tell me earlier that it got better at math. So... It's willing to contradict itself. Good trait for a robot, but we can see that it's finding problems in itself. <laughs> All right, we'll get more into chat GPT another time. I'll do one last little reminder that to anyone who wants to, after the stream, head over to the Discord and chat with people about that puzzle I mentioned earlier in the stream. That's a good place to work on that puzzle and chat about all other sorts of cool stuff. Also on the Discord, sometimes I put a post about something that I'm doing before I actually post it. Sometimes I post on the Discord like, hey, here's when the episode's coming out or whatever. I might start doing that on my Instagram too occasionally because I realized I barely ever use the app Instagram. But like, I don't really like social media apart from YouTube. So I only have like, you know, 40 or 50 maybe photos on their total ever. But when you search Demotro, the Instagram is one of the first things that comes up because the thing is Lord Demotro. So I don't want that. I want Demotro to pull up this channel. But I, I want to trick Google into not wanting Instagram as high as the YouTube. But since it's already so high, I might as well mention, which I have barely ever mentioned, like maybe once ever, that if you do use Instagram, I occasionally post stuff on there that gives a clue of stuff. But, you know, no need to flock over there. There's nothing that exciting. Actually, there are some interesting things from my past on there. I don't, I don't want to, like, endorse an app I don't even use, 
but I will say that if you don't care about going there, that's totally fine. I do not care about gaining subscribers on there. I care about gaining subscribers here. I don't even know if they're called subscribers there. So, but here, so sometime I will on you, YouTube, like on a live stream, I'll pull up some of the really old photos and tell the stories behind them. So, you know, if you don't want to go check out any old photos, don't worry. I'm not going to endorse some other app. We're on YouTube. I love YouTube. So let's see, we are mostly done with the main topics. I'm gonna run inside because I wanna grab my clock egg and I'm also gonna get some bird seed. In the meantime, I'm gonna set up these awesome things that we got from our combo Lord of the Month who so far um, I'm assuming didn't need any sort of shout out because they didn't put a name or anything. But once again, if you're the person who sent me all this wild stuff, um, thank you a lot. It's super cool. Feel free to email me if you want. And these are the things. So uh, let me know what you're most excited to see me explain or wait, where's the other one? And this, what you're most excited to see me work with or fiddle with or etc. And we'll put a little abacus in the background as well. Tell me what numbers you think that's representing right now. And I'll be back with some bird seeds soon. And we're back. So, like I said, this was a wild weekend. I went to multiple Passover seders, which is a Jewish thing. Went to this egg coloring thing, which I guess my friends weren't doing it in a Christian way, but it's sort of Easter-esque. And there was one night where I did the very rare not sleeping and just action after action after action. Not recommended to not sleep in a night, but once in a while you gotta do that. So <laughs> we're running on a little behind on sleep and we're gonna wrap up the stream before too long, but I did need to show you that at one of those things, oh man, I didn't bring the other thing I designed. We did egg coloring and tie dyeing. So I also tie dyed a shirt. I don't know how to do it very well, I'm the first time doing that, but I tried tie dyeing a shirt and it looks mildly cool. So we'll look at that. When you see me with a tie dyed shirt sometime under this, that's the thing I made over the weekend. 
I almost was considering tie-dyeing the lab coat, but you folks are lucky, I guess, that it was too early in the grade. If we were halfway through the grade, I might have tie-dyed this lab coat. But <laughs> that'll have to come another day. Now, with the eggs I designed, one egg that I made is a projection of the numbers called the Riemann sphere, which is a spherical other alternate way of viewing the numbers where you go around a sphere and you have zero to Wait, no, you have zero at the bottom to one to I to negative one to negative I and infinity at the top. It's this weird like orb like other way of viewing numbers as usual. Sometimes people get confused and whip out things about, no, but that's true or something. And it's like, no, 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 that plays by different rules. We got to be careful when we're talking about that thing. We're not just the rules that follow there. You can't just be like, but that's true when we're talking about our normal numbers. So that's true on the Riemann sphere. But it's a really cool type of way of viewing numbers we'll look at in the future. So I drew that on an egg, but also drew this on an egg. We got our clock. Now, little clock egg can point only one direction. Stopped clock. That makes sense. Yeah, has to be a stop clock. It's an egg. Now, I decided to do dots. I thought more clocks should have dots on them. There's on The only problem with that is I couldn't do a zero because I didn't have, like, spots. I could have done boxes with stuff in it, like if I circled them and one would be zero. Because clocks should have a zero on top. So I had to make one a 12 is the problem. Like, all these clocks, 12 should be zeros. It fits better with our modular analogies. But here, I do think more clocks should have dots or stuff like that, you know, transcends language. An alien would probably be able to figure out what I was referring to here. Not every alien, maybe, but, you know, there, if a random alien species was able to communicate with us, they're probably similar enough to us that they might be able to identify an amount of dots as a number. They're not going to know that this is necessarily numbers and not like words. So, that's fun. Uh, sometimes I do a wild egg party here with uh, various friends and family. And maybe we'll do a crazy egg coloring episode at some point in the future. The egg related thing we'll actually try sometime is something called the seven hour egg I want to try cooking. So sometime in this grade or next grade, we will try and cook a seven hour egg where I'll tell you about that on a very special snack break. In any case, we're going to fill the bird feeder and it's getting mighty dark. So we're going to wrap up the stream pretty soon. Here's our mod five table, which we didn't do too much with because today's stream was mostly about appreciating all these cool new sciency trinkets, but Mod 5 will be an example that will come in an episode about modular division in not too long on the main combo class channel. Make sure you've all seen the intro episode I put out that's like three or four minutes of fun chaos introducing the grade that's linked in the description here. So watch that after the stream if you haven't. And that's where, you know, we set up a few things like this, although it got emptied again. Now it says combo class on the wall. And we got a grandfather clock and a lot of upgrades. I looked at the grade negative one intro that came out last May. It looks so much less cool back here. We were just starting. We are already, you know, we're still going in upward in wildness back here, but the combo classroom looks so much cooler than it did in grade negative two than grade negative one's beginning. So we'll see how cool it looks by the end. And right now, for a while at least, we got our clean lab coat and our functional desk phase. And our short hair phase. You know, we may see that some of these things may go in correlated ways where the times where my hair grows longer may line up with the times where the grade is later or where more things are on fire or where the table slash desk can no longer exists. Well, it kind of exists, you know. I, I, the old desk still has a piece here. Not just a piece of my heart and a piece of education's history, but 
This is a piece of that old grade negative one desk. I had to keep one piece of it because that grade negative one desk, not only I taught a bunch of stuff on it, but it also broke in a really funny way. And in a rainstorm, I leaned on it and it's like halfway broke. And the arc of grade negative one where the desk was sideways was pretty fun. There was like a whole little stretch of episodes and shorts where this desk was diagonal. And if I put anything on it, it just slides down. So uh, all I'm going to say is I'm not going to intentionally break the desk. But uh, if it goes diagonal at any point, we're probably going to keep it that way for a while again. So here we got some bird feed and let's see if they clear it all in a day again because they ate an absurd amount the other day unless they like tunneled it all oh what am i doing yeah okay what do we do yeah i don't know if i did this right did i yeah i just need it okay leaking bird seed everywhere that's okay and squirrels will help me clean it up and the birds. It was actually really cool. After my last live stream back here, I was, when I'm talking, uh, the nature doesn't come quite as near because, you know, like little animals are a little more scared of a loud voice. So right as soon as I ended last live stream out here, I stop or I forget if last was the one that got dark. The last live stream I did here, there was sunny out, which I think one or two ago, the last sunny one. When I turned off the live stream, it was when I stopped talking really loud for an hour straight and instantly two birds came over because they were like wanted to come, but were scared of my voice or something. And as soon as I stopped talking, they weren't scared of me. And so they came right over and started eating the ground seed and stuff. And there are birds in the classroom. Also, one of my friends studies bird identification. So I'll have them come over sometime to identify which birds they are. So here we got our bird feeder thing. Uh, pretty nifty, huh? Me and uh, Carlo, who does a bunch of the filming here, nailed this into a tree. Has a little thing sticking out of it. Technically what this was, it was part of, whoa this really old whiteboard back here this whiteboard does not have much left of it whoa okay it literally broke off in my hands so yeah that's how much that's the state of the whiteboard <laughs> um so uh, people are noting uh some stuff about the desk someone's saying avoid pentagonally generated shapes hmm, i forget what that's in relation to and let's see do ba do ba do and yeah thank you for everyone joining me and to those distracted from their homework who are saying that somewhat jokingly and somewhat not um, remember, you know, to try and get what can be gotten good out of the homework. But is that something on me? Yeah. Dirt on me or something. Um, and remember that there can be some fun you can get out of homework, even though some of it might be a chore. And so hopefully you can get some fun out of it. But some of it is just a game you got to play. There's parts of that type of school that are for learning. And there's parts about setting up your future in society and getting a good job and all that boring stuff. So, I mean, it could be interesting. There's, I'm not putting down that part of it completely, but that's not what we are here for. We're not here for setting you up with a diploma. We are here for setting you up with some knowledge and appreciation of life. Of course, to people who my streams are at a bad time for, I try and make them watchable afterward to a degree at least. 
I don't always have time to add timestamps to them these days anymore. If anyone who watches these ever wants, feel free to leave comments with timestamps of different moments. And I might even pin one of your comments if it contains a bunch of timestamps. So that helps viewers from the future find when I talked about what. But in general, I try and make the live streams so that they could be watchable all the way through, but definitely more in a background -y way. This is my less perfectionist channel where you get the full story of all the stuff going on on a given shoot, uh, a given video experience. Whereas the other channel I spend, you know, maybe a week per episode planning and then filming on separate days and then editing together and stuff like that. And so the other channel, I mean, the actual filming stuff is very in the moment, but the process of the other one is more my, like, me making art projects throughout the week almost. Whereas this one is just like, let's give some more glimpses into some more fun learning in between all of that. So you can always watch these later, or if you need to, you know, don't need to watch all the streams unless you have a bunch of time. I think it's probably not that many of my viewers who watch all the streams, but leave a comment on this after if you watch this later after the fact, and you are one of the rare viewers who watches all the streams. That's pretty awesome. I'm sure there's a couple out there, but mostly I want to make sure everyone always watches the episodes on the main channel because the streams are more casual. The shorts do well enough for themselves on the page. The bonus videos are videos that I made bonus on purpose. I filmed them in one take, so they're less planned, even though they're correct info. They're less planned. They're, you know, not edited. And the bonus videos I make on this channel are stuff that may show up in a way better condensed form on the main channel, main combo class channel at some point. So all the stuff on this channel for various different reasons needs less help. Like the live streams need more help. It would be cool if they went to a wider audience with more comments, but I don't really care. I kind of do them for fun. They don't expand the audience that much anyway. They make a deeper community out of the audience. It's not about the live streams. If anything might lose me viewers sometimes, but they make the viewers who are here enjoy the community more and, you know, come down the combo rabbit hole. But to those who can't catch any content on this channel for any reason, this channel is kind of just for like a lot of content that I like to make since I like to make a lot of stuff. So it's okay if you don't watch all of it. Do make sure though that you watch at some point or another all of the episodes on the other channel called Combo Class because those ones for sure if I put out an episode are in the category of like, oh, I hope all my fans have seen this. Then on that channel, this grade, I will occasionally start posting some of my shorts on that channel too, just because the shorts did so unbelievably good at showing people this channel. And now this channel that is my last perfectionist channel has way more subscribers than the one with my main episodes. So even though this is still going to be the one with most of the shorts for a few of the shorts that I'm planning that are going to be like more detailed and more perfected and stuff. I might put a few on the combo class channel just to like show the shorts algorithm. This channel exists too, but don't worry. The main focus on that channel is still the full episodes. It's not going to like become a shorts channel or anything. Those are mostly just like to do a few of them this grade to show all the people on the shorts page who are for some reason subscribed to this channel and not that one, that that channel arguably has my better content. But this, you know, quantity versus quality. There's pros to quantity as well. I'm not saying this isn't quality, but I'm, you know, it's what they might, my two channels might lean toward. All right. And somebody is looking forward to bird ID. That'll be fun to learn the different sorts that live around here. Also, like I said, I will be staying somewhere over this next week that has a few redwoods. And I may put some of these large redwoods in the background of a streamer video. So that'll be a nice setting. For those who don't know, it's a very large tree. And a very softish, beautiful one. Cool. 
And thank you all for joining me in any case. I think I should wrap up because the darkness is hitting. Thank you especially to whoever gave me all this cool stuff where we will, in the future, discuss this normal distribution in Galton Board more. We will fiddle with our snakes. We may have times where it's useful. Whoa, my clock egg it almost fell off the table. Put it in the box for now. And might use these to see different directions. Oh yeah, if I have them upside down, I can see the sky. That's cool. Maybe I can see a bird. No birds at the moment. And they even sent this tensegrity or whatever the word is, suspension thing. Normally a knockoff Lego, I would be like, oh man, I would like bricks, but I can't mix them with my normal Lego bricks so they won't work as well. But this doesn't matter because it's its own little self-contained device. So I don't care if they're copying Lego. It's really cool and I can't wait to build it. So hi to everybody saying hi to different areas. And somebody says there are three in parentheses things on the table. Hmm. There are I'm not sure what you mean by that. There are many types of thing on this table. As far as the gifts, they basically came in a double sun, two sunglasses, two snakes, a suspension thingy, and a Galton thingy. And there's other random stuff around here. I should wrap up the stream as the darkness hits anyway and work on whatever writing slash editing slash studying I want to do for the night early so I can try and go to bed at a reasonable time and catch up on some sleep. Um, so, thank you all for joining me here. Hope that to anyone who does do anything special on this spring-like weekend, because a lot of people do either Easter or Passover or something like that, that regardless of what you were celebrating, it maybe had something to do with new growth and new spring and this season's kind of motifs. So hopefully you appreciated some of that. If you didn't yet, make sure this week to look out in the world around you if you are, I'm actually, I guess in different hemispheres, it's not necessarily spring right now, but if you are in my hemisphere where it is becoming spring, it may be a different seasonal shift for others. Just remembered that. But if you are in my hemisphere, then make sure to look at some of the cool, nice blossoms that are going to be sprouting on some of the trees because trees right now are not quite at the fruit stage, that's summer's deal, but they're at that nice little making blossom stage. Attract some bees, some other pollinators, get pollened up, make some nice fruits. So like the apple trees in my front yard are starting to make little flowers. So we'll check those out soon because the guava tree, as I showed once, once it makes petals on the flowers, they're edible. Once in a while, if you do your research, you can eat stages of the plant before it fruits. All right. Thank you all for joining me here. We are going to slip back into the darkness soon. And we'll be back with some sort of content tomorrow because I had a busy weekend of hanging out with friends and doing a lot of fun stuff with them. And now it's time for a busy week of teaching fun math and science and language and such. Mostly math, as you know, like we like to do around here, but I like teaching some other stuff as well. And here we have our upgraded combo class you can barely see because of the darkness. But darkness is one of those natural elements. I kind of like it. Because just like the rain, just like those four elements, in fact, let, we could almost call the fifth element as being the darkness. Because amidst all those other elements, with all their interactions, they can have different shades. Sort of like how you have primary colors, and then you have tints, white to black. How dark do you make the mix of primary colors? You can't make dark green with just yellow, blue, and red, you need some black. And so, similar to tints, you know. Uh, to whoever asked what grade we're in, 
we are in grade negative two, which is cool because negative two has more powers than negative one. For example, base negative one isn't as functional as base negative two. We've actually talked about base negative two. That's in an episode on that combo class channel and other things. Two is sometimes where the fun gets started. One is so powerful, but sometimes it stays at home. Sometimes with the patterns, one is so powerful at being itself and staying at home. Two sometimes takes us on journeys. So maybe like that, maybe we'll take some more field trips and journeys while we learn. So thank you all for joining me. We're going to log off now and I will catch you in either a live stream or some sort of bonus video in a day or two and various content throughout this week. During the weekend, there will be the next full episode, which will be the first full, like, this is my official math lesson of grade negative two on the main channel. That will be coming out this weekend, but there will for sure be some content on this Demotro channel before then. One last shout out to whoever sent all this stuff and a reminder to the rest of you, got any broken clocks? Check out that video linked in the description where I tell you rules for what you should or shouldn't send me. Well, love you all. Appreciate the spring or other seasonal shift that's happening wherever you're at. And if you want something fun to study, remember that in my last stream, part of last stream was just going through a bunch of different Wikipedia articles that I recommended people read, and we just skimmed the surface of them. So look on Wikipedia. I remember some of my favorites. Look up a uh, list of types of number, list of numbers, list of prime numbers, table of divisors, table of prime factors, table of bases, list of numeral systems. I think those are the ones we had. Uh, look up those things on Wikipedia if you want to do some extra studying tonight. Those are fun. Also, you know, some things to be said about a good old paper book. But... There's also some good things to be said for relaxing and watching YouTube. So, you know, maybe you already studied. In any case, I'll catch you in the next one. And I love you all. Whoever um, asked about the Discord earlier, make sure to check out that. Also, extra special thanks to the people who supported me on Patreon. Those supporters are very helpful. And they're a part of why I was able to, like make this work of getting a grandfather clock in here and stuff like that. And so extra thanks to them. Discord and subreddit and stuff are in the description. And I'll see you guys.